we're changing the CRT in the uh, CTC-28 and the CRT that was in the CTC-28 is going to end up going in this Magnavox here which the CRT in this set is totally dead. Um, the, the CRT we're going to be putting in the CTC-28 is a an RCA highlight and I did a video on the safety glass of this several years ago. I used uh, uh, water to soak this one off and I actually broke the original safety lens so it's got a clear one on it now. Um, I'll tack that video onto the end of this. The CRT that's coming out of out of the CTC-28 is an RCA Craporama and these are the RCA rebuilds. Now the one, the Craporama is going to go in the Magna Crap and this has the original CRT in it which is shorted, it's got shorts and it's extremely weak. Yeah, this is rather scary, man. These things are really stuck on here. Actually, pausing. Yeah, this is this is really scary. This could trigger this thing to blow up. Well, why don't we not do this then? Why don't we just use what's there? No, drop gonna, it in. When you put the CRT in, they're going to have to be in a different position because the the mask is in a different position. I mean, it's not going to. You're not just going to set it in there and it's going to line up. You're going to have to adjust it. This stuff is like glued on both sides. Mm. So, yeah, I don't like prying on this, especially with the safety glass gone. Because once you take the PVA material out of there, you know you kill the safety effect of it. You know it's hollow. Mm -hmm. So it's, you might as well not have the safety glass on it at all. It's just for looks at this point because the the plastic is gone. It's like taking the plastic out of a windshield. Yeah, these are a little bit different than the roundies. These have these rubber bumpers on the sides and or in the corners and there's not a whole lot of movement like side to side or I mean that's that's it really. So it's it's not like you have the difficulty with the rectangular lining it up in the in the uh, front as you do with the uh, round ones. The round ones there's a lot of a lot of play. You can get them off center or up and down easy. So what we'll do is we'll put. You didn't get the safety glasses, huh? We'll put these, you know, we'll put these around and then what I'll do is I'll put the one screw in because one of the screws goes through the right here and holds this on. So I'll put the one screw in and then I'll put the band around it. So I'll kind of get everything in place and then I'll tighten it down. And so what I did is I put the uh, four outside screws and they're loose. And then what I did is I got the band in place here. And the band is just like a big gigantic hose clamp. Now I'm going to tighten this down except I need to get a I need to get a ratchet so pause that. And how tight are you going with that? Uh, as tight as I can get it before it breaks. Don't try this at home? No, without the right safety gear. Ratchet. 
ratchet. I don't have one with this socket right now. Okay, pause that one. Okay, the RCA has been all reinstalled, the CTC28. And now to put this one, which is the colorama, the crapporama in the magna crap. So we should like get some video of this cheesy dis disco flower biscuit system at the bottom. Flower. This one does not have a safety glass on it. It'll be interesting to see. You know, I wonder if this one's going to fit in there. I didn't even think about that because this one's probably got a thicker face. Okay. Uh, whatever, we'll have to. Also, the numbers are different. That one's like a 25 VAMP. Yeah, that's the. This no, is this, is a, this is a 23 which is the actual true size. This is a 23 inch. That's a 23 inch tube too, but they used to kind of manipulate it. So it made it actually bigger than it was. So this will be a good experiment. And this one's held in by, you see how this one's held in by springs pulling on the yoke? Yeah. And the springs actually, they have, a, they have quite a ways they can go, so we might be okay. This CRT is dead though. It's in here. So I've never changed one of these before. Whatever. Shouldn't be that hard. This is some strong double sided tape that's kind of yeah, set up over is, the years. This is creepy. And it's preventing the. Uh, oh, you got that one. Kind of preventing the um, yoke from being removed. Really? Oh, they're coming off. They're just a little gooey and sticky. There you go. Putting all this pressure on the back of it. Ah, there. I knew it would break loose eventually. Okay. And there we go. Now we have to get these uh, screws in the corner off. Yeah, let's take this outer shield off first. Uh, I don't know, it looks like the shield needs to come off and then the band. There's a band wrapping around it. I, don't, I mean, I don't see the point of taking all the screws in the corner out. Anyway, assembly. I mean, it's a band, but it's a yeah. whole yeah. encapsulated. Does the band come off? No. You gotta make sure when you do this, you take all of these. Insulators? Yeah, these things, because they, they protect where those screws would rub on the picture bulb. Alright, here we go. This one... Wait, there's something missing here. There's a rubber... Where's the rubber that goes there? Here's the Magnavox. It's pretty much done and ready to go. This is the uh, Craparama CRT, so it's pretty weak. Uh, wasn't expecting anything, but it's definitely better than 
than that one right there which was the original Magnavox one the setup was fairly easy I didn't touch anything and I had to do very little adjustment on the uh, convergence this is a CTC 28 and with the new CRT in it and for some reason it I can't get the purity right it's hard to see with this because it's widescreen but basically in the bottom I cannot get the purity the red no matter what I do it's almost like the shadow mask is bent or something and also the contrast is all over the place and see how another thing is the smearing on both sides like if you watch her mouth moving or the coffee cup see how see how on the sides of his mouth you get the shadowing as it moves it's like the contrast is all over the place and the uh, it just it's working really bad and it seems like it worked better with the other CRT so I don't know I can't it's also really dim and this CRT yeah see how you get that I like it me too the sands from exotic it's really really working last year when I got poor sand in my crack it was hands-on learning for my butt I bet we all have a good sands from exotic land story I'm already bored back on the RCA CTC 28 that we put the highlight tube that tests really strong in yesterday uh, I can't get the purity to set up right and the, the picture is still dim even with the bias control cranked all the way up and the three screen controls are almost the blue is almost all the blue is all the way up greens almost all the way up and, you know they're almost all the way up it should not be that dim and the first thing I'm going to check is the degaussing and this is the plug right here for the degaussing coil what I'm going to do is since the set has been sitting overnight and you have to do this while it's cold is I'm going to measure the voltage applied to the degaussing coil when I first plug it in and of course we should see a spike and then we should see it taper off have to use an analog meter to do this because a digital will just kind of auto range and drive you nuts so we're gonna measure we're gonna be on the VAC scale volts AC okay here we go I'm trying to do this with just two hands Lauren, it's 8.13 right now. A key medical marijuana rule could be handed down today, Tony. What's that? Well, today the California Supreme Court is expected to decide the fate of local city bans on medical marijuana dispensaries. Comments made by justices at a hearing in January seem to say... Okay, let's, let's let it cool off for a minute. Okay, here we go again. I've given it about 10 minutes to cool off. I'm on the 3 volt scale now. Ooh. Something just fried. Let's try that again. What is this? Another Another cigarette infused going on with this thing this is a little freeze it this is the thermistor right here 
kind of cool this off. This is the thermistor and this is the VDR. The VDR, this is in series with the uh, B plus before the rectifier and this thermistor the resistance goes down as it gets hot this VDR acts as a relay in this circuit the VDR is in series with the degaussing coil which are in parallel with this so when this is cold the voltage drop is high and the voltage is high so the VDR conducts as this heats up the resistance drops so the voltage drops and at a certain point the VDR will stop conducting so something underneath here is you can hear the degaussing coil working Okay, here we go again. Go to the 8 volt scale. That's not right. Oh yes it is. It's because I had it frozen with the spray. See there goes that thing heating up. The, the thermistor is heating up now. Introducing our new Baja Shrimp Tacos, Tostada Salad, and Stuffed Quesadillas, El Pollo Loco, crazy you can taste. Okay, that thing you're looking at is so I can focus the camera, because it will not focus. USC and CLA, USC and CLA, both! So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the red purity. Oh, the color doesn't even want to work this morning. Beautiful. You can see the purity problem already. So we'll turn the blue off. And we'll turn the green off. And there's the red. And we know this has been thoroughly degaussed. There's no doubt about that. I'm going to pull the yoke back. And now I'm going to move the rings. Push the uh, probably push the yoke back forward. And this is what I had yesterday. No matter what I do, I cannot get it. I cannot get it to fill out. That's moving the yoke in and out.
It's almost like the shadow mask is bent, which is very possible. I got this as a used, a good used CRT from somebody a long time ago, and I have no idea what the history is. I did do the safety glass on it, and I'll tack that video onto the end of this. I don't know. I'm going to try changing the purity magnets. Here's the best I can get with a different purity magnet assembly. And this set did not have this problem with the other Colorama CRT and it was sitting in this exact location uh, with the exact same surroundings. Here's the purity thing that was in there and there's the new old stock one I stuck on there. Just can't seem to get the purity right. Can't seem to get it to, to work. Let me just document some voltages real quick on the CRT. Okay, checking the blue on the cathode I'm getting 235 on the grid I'm getting 123 with the bias all the way up and I'm getting 95 with the bias all the way down and on the screen I'm getting 777 with the screen all the way up, getting 418 with the screen all the way down. That seems low, that's 777. It seems like it should go up to close to 900 volts. See, look at that. It, if, I pull, if I tip the CRT socket so that it lets the cathode float, it just biases to the point where it kills the high voltage. See that? So, I don't know. These color TVs are a pain in the ass. It's time to go outside and do something else for a while. Just taking another look at the CRT. That's that's blue, green, red, and they all will meet the cutoff. So I'm going to have to double check, maybe change that video output tube and double check those voltages. I don't think that one's going up high enough on the screen. I think that should go from 400 to 900 or something, not 400 to 700. So maybe that. Re, uh, dropping resistor that's in series with the uh, boost and those pots has gone open or has gone high. 
I started looking at these voltages and these ones here uh, look okay because the boost is only 800 850 volts right here so the the 700 or whatever that seems except it, it seems like it could be a little bit higher but the big the big difference here was this this right here which was the uh, the grid and it was only going from 95 to 110 and so I followed that back and of course the bias picture tube bias down here manipulates that but then I followed it back here and I'm only getting a hundred volts 85 to 100 volts on these three plates and these caps have been all been changed back here so then I started to check this 400 volt source and it's low it's about 340 it's not 400 and I was looking at the power supply so it comes in here off the rectifier and it's 370 volts then it comes down through the uh, filter choke and it's 400 volts here well I'm only getting 345 here or I've got a bad wire somewhere I wonder how they're getting 370 here and then 400 down here is it just the the reactance of this choke and this filter here causing that these, none of these filters are getting hot and I don't really have any kind of hum bar so I'm gonna have to check into if something's loading this 400 down. I was talking to Dave WM and he was telling me you know take a look at the the factory manual or the RCA schematic the voltages make more sense so here we have 420 volts and then after the choke we have 405 volts so I'm thinking maybe that arcing is one of these rectifiers is is not connected so I'm gonna check into that right now and, and then I'm gonna measure my voltage right here Sam says 400 uh, this says 420 well it looks like we have 350 volts right on the output of the rectifier and yes there is a solder connection that is fried. I don't know if I'll be able to hit this with the... I don't know if I'll be able to do this. Which one is it that's fried? Anyway, one of those is fried. That's so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and solder that from the outside here. Let's try and get it from up under there. Okay, I've done my best to solder that diode. Let's see what happens. Hey, that looks a little better. Still not high enough though. I put this on AC and it shows I got four, 41 volts AC. I wonder if it's got a bad filter. I could just bridge one in there on top and see. Well, I bridged a, a capacitor here across this and it went up to 374 and the AC went down. To 12 but it's still not right um, the capacitors in here are good I'm sure that I have a feeling one of these diodes is either leaky or one of them's open and it's causing there to be no you know too much AC for the thing to filter now I'm measuring the AC across the die uh, the AC going to the bridge and it's 316 and the SAMS calls out like 305 so that's definitely good so I'm, I'm really looking at those rectifiers 
I checked all four diodes and they're all good. And the way this works is this is tied together and this is tied together. And this side or your these two outsides are your transformer AC, then this is like your positive and this is your negative. Well, this diode is still not making contact because I'm checking these two and they're not shorted together. These two are, so it's broken. The trace is broken on the bottom. I guess I could just solder something across the top because I really, I can't really access this. Even if I pull the chassis out, there's so much crap under here. Okay, I got it. Let's see what we do now. I, I managed to bend it over the screwdriver. Oh, I'm still on AC. Wow, the transformer's not humming like it was either. It's a lot better. No hum in the audio. Oh wow, okay. So let's try and check it again, try the alignment. Still, still got the bias cranked all the way up, which I'm not, not in agreement with. Definitely better. Who would have Who would have thought a Who would have thought a, a diode in the bridge rectifier would have caused those symptoms? But, you know, I, one day I will. But divorce rate is high right now, Ricky. So you know, it's not really looking Have good. any of you ever been in love? Yeah, yeah. I, I was in a relationship for 15 years. And, uh, so here we go. Young, so being in that for a I long did a quick time, convergence. Finally got it looks good. It's still um, dim. There's still an in. Well, maybe and not. Once you see, like, there's so many varieties of different women, you got to go for it. You know? Well, yeah. How can you? Did you see those varieties you... while you were with that woman? No. When I was in a committed relationship, there's no cheating or dishonesty. You said you were monogamous. Like okay. Yeah. I was just, I just needed to yeah, add. Yeah. No. No. Not right? a problem. I would never cheat on you, Ricky. Oh. When we get you okay. there. <laughs> Now isn't this cool? Look at that. Look at how good that looks. See, now I can watch this low IQ, Ricky Lake bullshit in style. What are your, like, come on, like, like I know you don't do come on lines anymore, but what's your style? What's your... My, my, my style right now, if I meet you, I say, hi, my name is Javon. That's, I'm a gentleman. 
So that's the first thing that I do. Most guys, they don't do that. They're afraid to even approach a, guy, a girl, for, for example. So with, for me, uh, my thing is I'm that normal guy that you can talk to. What an to absolute to zero. Person, not met any of his family okay, members, let's but you met take a, look of, a little bit more of this garbage, and I'm going to disconnect the jumper lead off that diode, and we'll see what changes. Is that advice for the, for the woman? You want her to stay off of Facebook? Or? Yeah, I, I want everybody to stay. Yeah, because the quickest way for a dude to get caught is Facebook. All right, well, I want to bring out two people with a lot of bad boy expertise. He is a best selling author and a bad boy. That's with the diode open. You can hear it humming. And life coach. Please welcome Steve Sanagani and Laura Barron. That's more like it right there. And now I'm going to connect the life coach. That's what the life coach disconnected. Steve, you're known as the bad boy, right? I made a, I, my business is bad boys yeah. finish first and bad girls finish first. So what's your definition of the term? All right. First of all, and guys, I'm going to be brutally honest. Ladies, number one, listen to everything that these guys have said today, whether you hate it, or whether it makes your skin crawl, because it this makes is like no difference filter. at all. This is the text. Except there, the picture shrinks a little bit and it hums. Okay, that's what you're looking at here. There's still something okay. wrong, now, though. Number one, none of these guys are bad. And boys. it could be Ricky Lake. And I wrote a book recently. I'm not plugging Ricky, but it's called The Code of Honor. We live by a code. We keep our mouths shut. We respect women. We don't show pictures of girls when they send stuff to us. You would never know. We're going to make you he feel look. like you're the most amazing and How only woman in the world. So one of these resistors has gone up in value quite a bit. For the blue, that's why the blue is so much weaker than the other ones. So the two main problems are the resistor and that crack solder joint for the rectifier. So I'll pick up one of these when I get to the store next. And when I pull the chassis out, I'll fix the diode and it'll be good to go. It's still a little dimmer than I think it should be. I think. I think the screen should be a little bit hotter. I'll check the rest of the resistors when I get it open. Another thing I noticed is with the 26GU7s out, this is the blanking amp. And one of the drives. This resistor right here has 16.9 volts on one side. More toxic to the bees than the Malone would be. The European 371 on the other the side, and this sucker is systemic hot, hot as hell, with the tube out. And that one that's getting hot is this 47K at 2 watt. And over here it comes to this capacitor, and it comes straight to the plate of the 6GU7 pin 1, which this tube is pulled out. So how is this possible for this getting to be getting this hot? I checked the voltage on the other side of this capacitor, which goes to the 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 grid and the cathode of the, these, and these are all zero volts. So how is it possible for this to be pulled to ground when nothing is connected to it or be pulled to 16 volts? It must be a Another case of cigarette plaque psoriasis. Have to take the chassis out to get to the bottom of that. Looking here I get pretty much the same schematic. It's isolated to the tube and the point twenty two and then the forty seven K. This is even better because here's the resistor right here. And you can see it comes over to the big capacitor right here, the C739, the point .22, and then it goes right here to pin 1 to the plate. So it almost, it can't be the capacitor because there's no voltage on this side of it, so it has to be probably a cigarette infused uh, plaque psoriasis urethane nugget. Um, encrusted right between the stake and the uh, thing here arcing right through the board. This is where the resistor solders. This is pin one of the blanker. So I guess maybe it could be arcing right there. 
or right here this is ground it comes from here and there's a jumper to there and there's the capacitor right there I want to show down here where it was arcing where it's all burn up where the rectifier connected see that bypass the resistor so you know let's just see where the short is come on ooh cigarette infused charcoal carbon so we can see exactly where the short was it was right inside the PC board. See, I might just have to delete this trace here all together now. Look at that, it just completely cremated it. Just replace it, because the cigarette ashtray cigar crust. Okay, what I'm doing is I've cut the trace out with a razor blade, and I'm gonna peel this chunk of it completely out of here. Um, there's little hope for such a thing, so I'm just going to delete it and replace it with a piece of wire. Okay, what I've done is I deleted that whole portion of the tr ground trace that was arcing, and I replaced it with that nice piece of Teflon wire there. So we're going to put the voltmeter on it and turn it on see how it works. Okay, here we go. No more loss, 197 on one side. Okay, I'm, so, I'm sorry, 378 on, this is the, this is the B plus side. And then on this side, which is pin one, 380. So we really don't have any drop across it. So the cigarette, charcoal filtered cigarette brewed, cold filtered cigarette chunk has been deleted. Also I would like to note that this there's a previous video on this uh, CTC 28 where it arced out before and you can see the repair right there and this was the repair today and this is resistance straight through the circuit board from cigarette paste. Speaking of cigarette paste Come to where the flavor is. Come to Marlboro Country. Look at that. Doesn't that look nice and tasty? Mmm, yum. Okay, here we go. Now if I fix this, it should just be probably blown out bright. Uh, and... I should be able to get a setup line. I feel like I'm finally getting to know the real desire behind the facade. So keep it open. Thank you very much. Thank you, Adam Levine. What do you think of that rock performance? How you doing, man? Good, brother. How you doing? That was great. That was great. That's a really tough song. And I'd also like to just, you know, for a second, praise you, Usher. Uh, just seeing Usher's way of coaching. Yes, Usher, uh, sure, I should praise you for the golden super shower. Super oh, wow. Yeah. Jeez, you talk about blown out made, bright. That sure did made make a difference. Beginning. <clears throat> That's a tough song. There were little things, but for the most part, I thought it was really great. Man. Oh, it's sorry, that was R. Kelly. Not Usher. I don't know crap about no. rock and roll, but I, I, I will say that... R. Kelly that was, is the golden uh, I agree with that. That, that shower was king. Or queen. Or queen. Or Energetic. I think the world's going to lose... Is going to lose... Wow. Okay, let me turn my screens all the way down. That's the screens all the way down now. Okay, that's service mode. Wow. I'm going to turn the bias all the way down.
So that's the bias all the way down, that's the bias up. Green is definitely the weakest. So the green screen is all the way up, with the bias all the way down. Jeez, and it's still like way too bright. Boy, getting that blanking amp online sure makes a huge difference. The Voice is sponsored in part by Starbucks Frappuccino. Countless flavors to fill your summer. Frappuccino. Infinite ways to enjoy summer. Find your favorite during Frappuccino happy hour. So I'm actually... Giving your father's approval will be the ultimate engagement. That's quite a half It's a seven days. You like wearing women's clothes. Tyler Perry presents People. Rated PG-13. Directed by Tito Gordon Chisholm. Friday. What I love the most That's the sharpening right there. It helps you think for yourself and... Well, getting that blanking amp online made all the difference in the world. Everything fell into place. And it was all because of that cigarette infused resistor on the bottom of the circuit board. That's right, you bastard. Stop right there! Yeah, give me the paper! No! No, don't hurt me, you bastard! Mort, give me the paper! No, I'm reading it in here. You can have the real estate section. It's for schmucks anyway. Of course, now it has a totally excellent okay, picture. The bottle got and it's too bright. Oh. I got the, um, the bias is all the way down. And all three of the... All right, let's go make some white water. All three of the screens are about a quarter of the way up. Okay, slutty cat. And next. the oh brightness God, is working. about knows who we are. three quarters of the way up. So it's like a hundred times brighter than it was before. All right, slutty cat and Optimus Prime into the closet. Oh my god, you're gonna hook up with a 